So boys, we are back with some more Redskins franchise mode here in Madden NFL 19. And today, we're going to go sim some weeks up until the Eagles game, just to go and see against Carson Wentz and so on. So right now, we are sitting at week 12. We're sitting at a 6-5 and five record after destroying the Bills completely 31-10. We dominated them in that game, along with a performance by Will Fuller the 5th. Hell of a game for Will in that one. Probably his best so far as a Redskin, but regardless, we do have some scouting to do quickly before we do anything else. I'll just give you an update on the scouting and see where everything is at right now. We had the majority of the first round scouted. A good solid 70% of it, probably at least. So right now at this point, I'm kind of just scouting random talent because we needed some more talent sprinkled around this team. As we did draft linemen last season in the draft, we drafted linebackers. So I want to focus on just adding like more on the defensive line more mainly this season and maybe adding like a receiver, probably a receiver at least in this draft through the uh, see if we can get a guy with some potential at least. But I want to see if there's any good solid receivers so far. So right now you have guys like Tyrion Randall, we have Tyree Newton, Kashim Dixon, ba Banks McLeon. Then you have Nate Mullins, Javante Ship, Artez Rayford, I want to see him. He seems to be a solid fifth round talent, so he's a bust. JT Carr, Jimmy Gold, Dorian Hopson. You have Marcel Barr, which is a bust. Darian Yates, Bradley Pujade. Let's see. I want to see DJ Adams. DJ. Undrafted talent. Okay, so that's basically the majority of the wide receivers. Then. I want to see if we could have any centers in this draft because it's good to have a backup center just in case Braden Smith doesn't pan out. But we have guys like Philip Windsor, TJ Lai, not bad right there. Morgan Riley there. Not to be confused with Morgan Riley from the Leafs, but right guard we have nothing much there. Left guard, we don't need to draft one, and there's none barely in the draft anyway. Left tackle, it would be nice to get a left tackle or right tackle or just a tackle in general. Wouldn't be bad to get some depth on this team with that position. Let's see Alan Mooney. He's not that good. Frank, not that good as well. Let's see some more defensive line talent. I, I got to do a lot of this. So Malcolm Ubodi. He is the early third round talent. I want to see, yeah, Broderick Holmes. Finish all my scouting off on him. And he's not bad. So that is the majority of the scouting done. We're facing off against the Eagles in a couple weeks. I'll play that game against Carson Wentz and the defending Super Bowl champs, Eagles, who we got destroyed against uh, the past couple weeks ago. But we'll go in Sims next week and see where our division stands. So the Cowboys lost that game, so we're tied for second here in our division with the Cowboys at a 6 and 5 record. Not too shabby. We do face them off, face off uh, against the Cowboys in week 16, so we got to watch out for that matchup right there. But right now. Okay, so the Eagles are 10 and 1. That's insanely good. We have the 3 and 8 Giants. We're facing off against the Niners this week. I want to see Jimmy G's team right now and see where they're at right now talent-wise because they weren't that bad a couple years ago. So I want to see if the Niners added any talent this season that I missed out on when I was reviewing some of the teams. So Jimmy G 84 overall, 27 years old. Just take a look at his intangibles quickly before you do anything else. And yeah, he's got some good stats to him. Jimmy G. A beast right there, 11th best quarterback in the league, according to his stats. Then they have CJ Bethard, their backup uh, quarterback. Jarek McKinnon there is injured right now. He's yelled for a couple more weeks. Dislocated elbow out three weeks. Okay, so we're seeing Matt Breda taking the snaps for this week. He's a 78. Fullback's pretty good, 85. Then they have guys like Marquise Goodwin, who's a beast right there. 96 speed, very fast. Then we have Pierre Garçon, we got Dante Pittis, Trent Taylor, and Kendrick Bourne. Then at tight end, they have George Kittle, 78. Left tackle, Joe Staley, they're 86. Left guard, Wesley Johnson, 68. Weston Richburg, they're 81 overall center. Uh, Joshua Garnett, 70 overall right guard. Right tackle, Mike McGlinchley, a 79 overall right tackle. Left end, they have Eric Armstead and Nick Bose as well. He's a beast as well. Then they have right end Solomon Thomas at 23 years old, 81 overall. DeForest Buckner there, 92 overall, 25 years old. Left us a linebacker Mason Foster there at a 75. Middle linebacker Reuben Foster, 92 overall, 25 years old. Right to the linebacker Malcolm Smith at a 73. Cornerbacks, they have still have Richard Sherman there, 87 overall, and Witherspoon. Then they have Colbert there at 78 at free safety, and 84 overall Tart at 
strong safety and Robbie Gold at kicker, and then Bradley Pinion at punter AD overall. So their team's pretty underrated though. It's not bad. They're 6-4-1, and one, pretty much the exact same record as us. So we'll go and sim that week and see if you win against the Niners. So we're now on a two-game winning streak. You won against the Niners 21-14 on the road. Hell of a game right there by us as Alex Smith, 249, a touchdown, zero picks, and a 106 passing rating. Whereas Jimmy G at 149, a touchdown, a pick, and that 90 passing rating with a 78% completion percentage and Alex Smith at a 61. Then rushing-wise, we had 64 from Matt Breda and a touchdown. Then we have Darius Geis at 60 on 16 carries and two touchdowns. Then Jeremy Hill at 36. And then we have Kyle with 32 and so on down that list. Receiving yards-wise, Jeremy Hill led the day there. 82 on four receptions. And what was his longest? 26. Okay, so he's being used heavily there in the receiving game. Then Paul Richardson at 61. Then we have Peter Garcon at 46. 44 for Jamison, 44 for Reed, 43 for Goodwin, and a touchdown. 19 for Hodges. Will Fuller had one reception for 11 yards, and so on down that list. And Vernon Davis, there's seven yards and a touchdown in that game. Blocking-wise, we had two sacks led up by Joshua Garnett and Wesley Johnson. Nothing on us. Then Zach Brown led the day there in tackles, 11 on the day. Ionais had 10 tackles and two sacks, three for a loss. That's pretty good right there. Then we had Devin White at 10 tackles there on the day. Ruben Foster at 9, 7 for DJ, 7 for Witherspoon, 6 for Kerrigan. We'll just go with our own list right there. We let in sacks. 2 by Ionitis, 1 by Jonathan Allen. Our defensive ends getting at him. And then our interceptions, 1 by Zach Brown. So Zach Brown, 11 tackles and a pick in that game. Then kicking wise, 0 punt kicks for Dan Bailey. Punting wise, 3 punts for Tress Way. Kick return wise, nothing much there, and punt return wise, nothing much there as well. So we win that game 21-14. We're going against the, the one of the top teams in the NFL, the Eagles. I want to take a look at their record and see how they're just dominating this season. They've not lost besides one game this season, so it'll be a tough cookie to crack in this next episode. I want to see where they lost though. They lost against the Packers of all teams, 17-13. So low scoring. They dominated us a couple weeks ago in week 9. They just won against the Bears. They dominated them. They dominated the Cowboys. And they won 18-14 against the Jets. Okay, so pretty civil win right there after dominating us before the bye. But we're facing off against us this week. And then they have the Vikings game, Giants, and Bills. So they have a pretty easy schedule for the most part besides uh, what we're facing off against. Like, we're a pretty underrated team compared against them. So... We're not really counting us so completely against the Eagles, but they're a very good team. We're pretty much all right of a team, so I don't know what's going to happen at this point. But stats-wise, I'm going to see where our team is when it comes to stats. So let's go see awards. I want to see if any of our players got weekly awards yet. Week 1, nothing there. We have 2. Sam Darnold got back-to-back -back player of the weeks for AFC offense. Carson Wentz got NFC offense week 2. Week 3, nothing there. Week 4, nothing there. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Doesn't look like there's much of anything here. Nope. So no Redskin is one player of the week yet this season. So I'm hoping at least you could probably do that this week. That'd be cool. But I want to see our stats so far through these... How many weeks has it gone by? I swear there's been like 13 weeks so far. So we're on 13, 14 weeks gone by so far. Alex Smith, 2,686 yards passing, 16 touchdown passes, 14 interceptions for a 60% completion percentage on the season. Then rushing-wise, 820 for Darius Geis, 8 touchdowns, 3.5 per carry, average for yards. And then we have Jeremy Hill, 275, 2 touchdowns. Alex Smith at 47. And Kelly Bryant's one rush for one yard and a touchdown. Then receiving yards wise, Jordan Reed letting, leading the team so far with 850 and four touchdowns. Then Will Fuller, there's 683 and three touchdowns. Jameson Crowder, 499, three touchdowns. Paul has 356 on two touchdowns. Then Jeremy Hill has like 201 and two touchdowns. Moncrief, 238 and a touchdown. Vernon Davis, 91 and a touchdown. And so on down that list. Then blocking wise, Chase, Luke, Eric, Warmack, 
of all not allowed sacks yet this season. Braden Smith only allowed one so far. Sam Sheriff has allowed two. Trent's only allowed two sacks this season. So Trent stepping up big this season when it comes to allowing sacks. Last season was a complete mess for him. So I'm glad that Trent's getting it up back on the track here when it comes to his performances. Then Calamete is two, Jordan is two, and Moses with six on the season. So Moses kind of getting exposed there when it comes to the rest of the team. But defensively, it looks like Devin White is leading us in tackles so far. A middle linebacker, a rookie from LSU, 75 tackles on the season. Four for a loss, one and a half sacks. DJ is 74 and a sack. Then Trayvon Mullen, 71 and a pick. Then they have 68 for Zach Brown and three and a half sacks and two interceptions. 61 for Dunbar and two interceptions. 57 for Kerrigan and four, tack and four uh, sacks, 10 for a loss. 43 for Monte Nicholson, 39 for Matthew Ioannidis and four and a half sacks. 38 for Kareem Jackson and a sack. I mean, then an interception, I mean. And then we have 30 for Abraham and three sacks. So Abraham's having a good year when it comes to sacks. 29 for Jonathan Allen and two and a half sacks. 29 for Jerry Ron Payne, and zero sacks so far this season. So I'm going to see if we can get one within the last couple weeks of the season coming up. Arakpa is 28 and three sacks. And then we'll just see what team, who's leading us in sacks. So Ionis with four and a half, Kerrigan with four, three and a half for Brown, three for Abraham and Arakpo, two and a half for Allen, one and a half for White, one for DJ, Preston, Sharif, and Clay Pratt, and then half a sack for Tony Lippett. Picks-wise, two for Zach Brown, two for Quentin Dunbar, and one for DJ, Pratt, Mullen, and Kareem Jackson. So not bad right with that. But Dan Bailey, 75% from field goals this season, 9 for 12, 53 yards out is his longest. And yeah, he's just having a pretty good season compared to last year with uh, Dustin Hopkins. Though Dustin did terrible all season long, so I'm happy you actually have a good kicker this season. As for punting, that's Tressway's punting. Nothing big so far this season when it comes to the kick return. No touchdown so far. And same with punt return. Compared to the rest of the NFL, they're 20th in offensive yards. First in defensive yards, it looks like right now. So our defense doing well, I guess. 23rd in points scored in the NFL. Defensively, we're 7th for points allowed. So our defense, big part of our success this season. Offense, not so much. We're 20th in the NFL. We're not dead last. It's not that bad. So defensive yards, big surprise right there as we're number one somehow in defensive yards allowed. So, hey, I guess that's not bad, though. That's not bad. I like that. So, let's go and see what else do we have left. Oh, yeah, our yearly awards. Okay, just want to do an update on those. So, Carson Wentz, number one for MVP so far. Phil Burbers, two. Baker Mayfield, third there. Matt Ryan, fourth. And there's no Redskins, obviously, within this. But Tom Brady, last year's MVP and the previous year's MVP, in 10th right now. So it's looking like he's probably not going to get MVP this season for a third year in a row. Then coach of the year, Doug Peterson. Then you have the Chargers coach, the Chiefs, Ravens, and so on down that list. Surpri not, not really surprising that we're not on that list, but offensive player of the year looks to be Le'Veon Bell for the AFC. Then CJ Mosley for defensive. Uh, then offensive rookie, Noah Font. And all the people down there. Defensive rookie, Montre. Montre Hartage, and then all that down there. Then best QB, Phillip Rivers. Then best running back, Le'Veon Bell. Best receiver, DeAndre Hopkins. Best O-lineman, David Castro. Best D-lineman, Miles Garrett there. Best linebacker, CJ Mosley. Best DB, Jimmy Smith. And best kicker, Cody Parkey. Then for the NFC, for Offensive Player of the Year, we have Carson Wentz, obviously, on that list. And, but no Redskins right there. Defensive Player of the Year, Bobby Wagner on that list. Offensive Rookie, we have Rodney Anderson from the Giants. Then Defensive Rookie, we have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And then Devin White there in second. So Devin White could steal that eventually if the Cardinals, Cardinals keep going down along with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson's performances. So hopefully we can get Devin White a Defensive Rookie of the Year because that helped tremendously for his development. But we also have Trayvon Muller there in fifth, so not bad right there. Two Redskins in Defensive Rookie of the Year running. Then best QB, we have Carson Wentz. And nowhere to be seen is Alex Smith on that list. Then best running back, Ezekiel Elliott. Then Geis in fourth. Then best wide receiver there, we have Julio Jones from the Falcons. But we have no... Redskins on that one. Best O'Lyman, Lane Johnson. 
Then you also have Trent Williams and Brandon Scherf there on that list. Not bad in 8th and ninth. Then you have best D lineman, Tyrone Crawford on that list. Best linebacker, Levante David. And we also have Zach Brown on the list. Not bad. Then we have best DB. We have Marshawn Lattimore. And then no one on our team from that list. Best kicker, Chandler Catazzaro. And then we have Dan Billy in 10th. Then Offensive Player of the Year. We just went through that. So we went through all that. That's so far in the runnings. We're number one defensive yard, surprisingly. So it's not bad. This year, defense putting in a good effort right now. So all that's left is going sim some scouting. And then we're going to take a look at some signings first. And then we'll end it off. Okay, so I got the majority of the right ends all basically scouted that I really need. Left ends, same kind of thing right there. Then D tackles, we gotta get that as well too. A lot of D tackles in this draft. So we've got like Roman Jameson, nothing much there. Then we have Willis Dillian, or Willis Dillon. We have Cecil Florence, early third rounder. Roy Armstrong, late second rounder. So kind of a good pick right there for Roy. Then we have dudes like Jason McPherson, and he's a bad pick kind of. Derek Harden. Oscar Murphy, and we can't get those guys yet. So, right now, as it stands in our division, we are 7-5, facing off against the 11-1 Eagles in the next episode. Cowboys won, so they're 7-5. We're 7-5. 3-9 Giants. I just wanted to go look at the NFC standings, in actually the NFL standings in general, and see where we're at. So the Eagles, they clinched the playoffs, obviously, as they're 11-1. Chiefs are 9-3. So we're facing off against the best team in the NFL next episode, which is insane to say that because the Eagles are crazy good. But Chiefs are 9-3, Chargers 9-3, 8-4, Ravens. We're 11th right now in standing, so it's not bad, actually. We're pretty good when it comes to the rest of the NFL, so not that bad at all. Let's see, the Patriots are 6-5, okay. So only like a game off. They're 6-5-1. So we're doing not that bad in the NFL. We're only like two games off of like one of the third best teams in the NFL. So we're doing pretty good right now. So I want to see NFC. Yep, right there. So we're sitting pretty there in a playoff spot, I believe, right now in the NFC because we are tied for second in our division. Hopefully we can go beat up the Cowboys, snag that playoff spot, and head to the playoffs this season. But we'll go see that after we play this game in Philly. So make sure to like and subscribe for more Redskins franchise mode. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.